In this lesson, we'll learn how to construct a basic particle system in Toon Boom Harmony. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so throughout the duration of this course, we'll be learning about how particle systems work in Toon Boom Harmony and how we can design and create our own particles. Now before we begin, I just want to mention a couple of things. Um, particles are a feature exclusive to Harmony. So if you're using Animate or Animate Pro, unfortunately you will not have access to this feature. And then secondly, I'm using the Toon Boom Harmony keyboard shortcuts. I actually have some previous Harmony courses in which I use the Adobe Flash keyboard shortcuts. So if you hear me mention a particular keyboard shortcut that sounds different from when it did in one of those courses, just keep that in mind. Now if you want to change your keyboard shortcuts, simply come up to Edit, Preferences. This will take you to your Preferences dialog box. And just look for this first tab right here titled Shortcuts. And right now you can see it's set to Harmony. But you can also click this little downward arrow and you can switch to Flash or Toon Boom Studio. So you have the option to switch in between um, those different keyboard shortcuts and just choose the one that you're more acclimated to using. Okay, so the first thing we want to make sure we're doing is make sure we're in our drawing view. And we're just going to go ahead and draw kind of three simple shapes um, that are going to be used as our particles as we explore how we can build a basic particle system. So on our default drawing layer, um, we're going to go ahead and just using our brush tool, let's just draw kind of a circular designed shape, kind of a circular spiral shape, kind of like that. You'll notice it fills in that first cell right there. Let's go ahead and jump forward in time, and let's draw kind of a triangular spiraled kind of shape, something like that. And then we'll do go ahead and do one more, kind of a square spiraled shape. Okay, so we got basically three separate shapes here that um, you can really think of each one of these shapes as an individual particle, and we're going to be able to basically control how they're generated. Um, you can also think of these individual particles as being referred to as sprites, and we'll kind of talk more about that um, as we move forward in building our basic particle system. The next thing we want to go ahead and do is let's make some room here. I'm just going to kind of pull down our timeline view just a little bit. And we'll go ahead and switch to our network view. Okay, and just making a little bit more room right here. You're going to find that you'll be using the network view heavily as you build any kind of particle system. Okay, uh, the next thing we want to go ahead and do is switch to our module library, which by default you should see that tab right next to your timeline tab. Let's go ahead and click on that. If for whatever reason you're not seeing it, Simply click on this downward arrow right here, and on the drop-down menu, just choose Module Library. It's about halfway down, and that'll add it right here in this view. Okay, so what we want to do now is basically talk about the main modules that you'll always have to have when building any kind of particle system. Think of these modules as really your core uh, modules for your particle system. So the first module that we really want to bring in is our system composite module right here. Okay, And we're going to be talking about each one of these modules um, once we've brought them all in. So you're definitely going to need a system composite module. Um, the next module you'll have to have is your baker. So just pulling that from right there, dragging that into our network view. And then the third one we'll absolutely have to have is a visualizer. So this module right here. So these are three modules that you'll always have to have um, when building any kind of particle system. They're kind of the core of your system. You'll notice that they're color coded and the, the different ports on each one of these modules are also um, different colors and it basically um, allows you to figure out how they're connected and what order they connect in in case you ever forget. So you'll notice that the port on the bottom of our system composite is the same color as our Baker module. So we know to connect that right there. And then likewise, we have the same arrangement for our Baker and our Visualizer. The port on the bottom of the Baker is purple, just like our Visualizer. So we know to connect that, connect those two. And then for our Visualizer, we have that blue port that allows us to know it needs to connect it to the main composite. Okay? Just kind of organizing them here as we go. 
and you can hold down spacebar to kind of navigate the network view. Let's go ahead and switch to our camera view. There we can still see um, our different uh, drawings that we have here. The drawing view really uh, represents the drawings in their original state, whereas the camera view uh, will allow us to see any kind of transformations that take place, um, any kind of animation that happens. Okay, so what we want to go ahead and do now is bring in our next really important module and that is our sprite emitter. As I mentioned earlier as we drew those different um, different designs there um, you can not only think of them as individual particles but think of them as individual uh, what you would call sprites. The sprite emitter is an action and the action of the sprite emitter allows us to determine how these different particles are generated and rendered. And so all of our actions will be purple and they're going to all be plugged into our particle system composite. So once we've done that, we want to take this drawing layer or this drawing module containing those different designs and we want to unplug it from the main composite. And you can see that we can no longer see it there because it's not attached to um, any, any other module right now, such as the composite. And what we want to go ahead and do is basically attach our drawing layer containing our individual particles to that blue port on the sprite emitter. Okay, So this is going to allow us to basically use the sprite emitter to control how those particles are, again, generated and rendered out. We still can't see our drawings, and that's because we don't have a region to really define them in space. Okay, so particles can exist in 2D or 3D space, and we have a couple of modules to choose from in deciding that. So we have one here titled Planar Region. Think of that as just a two-dimensional flat region for your particles to exist in. So we basically you have access to um, X and Y um, uh, positions within that region, whereas your 3D region module, you have um, both X, Y, and then you also have the addition of Z space as well. Let's go ahead and try out this 3D region. We'll just pull that in. Okay, and again, it's these ports are color-coded, so we know that it connects to an action, in this case, our sprite emitter. Now, once we've done that, we see uh, there's stuff happening here in the camera view, and it looks like we're able to see just that first drawing and it seems to be continually generated as we scrub forward through time and would continue to basically um, generate no matter how long our timeline is, as you can see there. Okay, And this, at this point, this is where we can start to come into our emitter module and start controlling how these particles are generated. Okay, But we're going to reserve that for our next lesson. What we want to go ahead and do now is talk about, once again, these different modules that we brought in. Again, these kind of these core modules that you have to have. Okay, So the system composite, think of that as kind of a bucket or a bowl that's going to contain all of the actions, just all of the dynamics um, of your particle system. It's kind of a container. All right. It's gathering all that stuff together and calculating basically what's happening, right? The particle baker basically calculates that entire simulation, okay? So um, in our particle baker, that's where everything is basically being funneled into there, and it's all being calculated. Now, also in our particle baker, if you click on this little yellow box bringing up the layer properties, you also have some additional settings such as number of pre-roll frames, and number of mac basically your maximum number of particles. Your pre-roll frames really allow you to decide um, at what state your particle system is already in. Okay, and we'll kind of demonstrate that later on towards the end of the course. Um, your maximum number of particles basically allows you to control um, how many particles are being generated, especially if you don't have some sort of kill module um, that basically allows you to decide when the particles die out. Um, you could control it in there if you wanted to. And then finally, our particle visualizer module allows us to define where our particle system exists in space. Okay, so for our space, we have a 3D region. Okay, and so we can basically define where these particles sit within that region by um, using our particle visualizer. So if we went ahead and clicked on one of these green tabs, which basically allows us to connect um, a peg. We can go ahead and uh, click or hit Control-P on our keyboard. 
that'll automatically attach a peg to that module that we selected. And so with that peg selected, we can switch to our perspective view and we can hold down Alt and Control on our keyboard and we can rotate our particles in space and we can also take our translate tool for our peg and we can basically grab either the X, Y, or Z arrows and we can define where we want these particles to basically be uh, placed in space, okay? And that's all by attaching a peg to that visualizer module, okay? Now, um, if you are noticing that you don't have some of these buttons right here, you'll notice I grabbed the Translate button. Um, that's our Advanced Animation Toolbar. If you're not seeing that, come off to the side here, right-click, and just check mark Advanced Animation right there. And then also, if you're not seeing that Perspective tab that we jumped into, again, just simply click on this downward arrow, just like I talked about adding that module library, and you just want to go ahead and choose Perspective from the drop-down menu, okay? So these are basically just some of the core things that you need to have when setting up a basic particle system kind of structure here in the network view. What we're going to go ahead and do in our next lesson is jump into our sprite emitter. Okay, and we can do that by clicking on that little yellow box, and we're going to focus on the generation tab and start to control how those three different drawings that we have, um, basically those three separate particles, we can control how they are generated. So stick around, and we're going to tackle that in our next lesson.